Welcome to DonAlfin.com. We're at Strawberry Reservoir this morning, second day of August 2018. Um, and I'm on what I'm going to call the deep, deep, deep tube bite. It's an actual, just a, just a jig bite, but if you look at that finder right there, we're in 41 feet of water, and look at these fish hanging here. Those are the fish that we're after, and we're going to catch them anywhere today between, I would say, 35 to 70 feet of water. So we just caught a nice one and, uh, and landed it, and I went ahead and put the camera on, and we're going to start uh, filming here. So sit back, relax, and enjoy uh, today's episode. I'm here with my good friend Kent Spencer, and uh, we're going to see if we can't get some of these big cutthroat to, uh, to come up and bite. The first one we caught was about a 17, 18-inch cutthroat, and then the second one we just released was just a little over 24 inches. So um, we're after big fish, and having a great time uh, trying to figure out how how they uh, do on a deep bite in uh, first few days of August. If you look at that finder right there we've got some fish down there but those fish are, are probably bait fish, small fish. We're looking for the larger lines uh, that come onto the screen and and uh, there we go there's a fish right there. That looks like a fairly decent fish. Now that came right out of that pack of bait. Doesn't feel like too large a fish, but it's a it's another one of those nice uh, cuts. We'll just see how big. Oh, you know what? Just exactly like I we wanted. Can't come look at this fish. Isn't that a dandy? You want to go ahead and net that one? Ah, beautiful, beautiful cut. That's another one approaching 22 inches. So let's just go ahead and get him in and handled. <laughs> what do you think Ooh, about that, beauty. my boy? Is that a dandy or what? And he's off. off. One of the things I like to do when it's, when it's hot like this is I like to get him back in the water really quick. And I'll put him down, kind of put him down in the water kind of on an angle. And they just, they just kind of wake up and just boom, they're gone and just like that. So. That's great. Kent, it's your turn, my friend. Let's see, what, see about catching another one. They're starting to bite. All I'm doing is dropping my tube straight down. Uh, if you look at the, uh, at the finder, let's try to get a decent angle at it, that's a fish we're after. Those are the fish we're after right there. So all I'm doing is just dropping this straight down off the bow of the boat and uh, letting it go right down to him. Now I actually think this is probably the fish I caught. It came all the way down and just stopped down there. So I'm not expecting to catch that one again. But what we're using is three and a half inch tubes. Um, these happen to be Dry Creek, Dry Creek uh, Outfitters tubes. I really like them in the three and a half inch series, um, and uh, and basically uh, we're just tipping it with a little night crawler on a quarter ounce ball head. Uh, try to get a light water light a light wire ball head rather than a heavy wire ball head. But that's all we're doing is we're just going right down to the bottom, watching the screen. We've got a fish finder in the front, fish finder in the back, and. Uh, just allowing these fish to smell that little tiny bit of night crawler on that tube and come over and get curious. Okay, now I'm looking over here and I've got a fish that just came on the, the screen in about 42 or 43 feet of water. Now I believe I'm pretty well down to the bottom, not quite at the bottom, so I'm going to let it go all the way down to the bottom. And then just, and then like I said, you're just trusting that down there those fish are going to smell the bait they're going to come over to it and give it a look. Now, I'm going to drop my rod here, and uh, my buddy Kent wants me to turn the sensitivity up on a finder. So I'm just going to drop my rod on the deck, and you follow me around. You'll probably be able to get a good glimpse of Kent back there fishing. And I'm just going to turn and face my finder and show you how to change sensitivity. Now, he's seeing... What Kent doesn't realize yet is that these are all fish, so he's absolutely seeing what he needs to see. Yes, 
that's the same thing that I'm seeing up there. It's, it's just that mine is a little bit bigger screen. So, so if I wanted to do increase sensitivity, I push menu, and then you see sensitivity is auto. If I push right there and push enter, then it's off of auto, okay, automatic. And then I can just um, uh, push the sensitivity thing again, and it's auto, off, and then I can, can start to, uh, you see the sensitivity? Right here, it's up to 77%. So if I wanted to get it more sensitive, I can put it up to 80, 82, 84. Okay, so let's just do that, and I'm going to push enter and then you're getting more sensitivity. But all that you're seeing down there is exactly what I'm seeing, and it's, and it's fish. Okay. Those are the bait fish and the fish, and all you can see, those lines right there, those are all the fish, and then right at the top of that, uh, right at the very top of where those bait fish are, between, between here and here, are um, the cutthroats that we're catching. Okay. okay? So, so yeah, that's a, it's, a, it's a little bit, it's an it's a earlier version of the... Um, of the finder and once again there's another thing that I could do let's just um, you have a zoom over here so let me zoom in for you that'll give you a little bit Ooh, like little that. bit better picture and I've got mine zoomed in once too yeah there you go that's all you need yep so you should be able to your your transducers right next to that motor so, so the closer you can drop right to the motor, you should be able to actually see your, your bait go down to the bottom. Now we have small baits on, so they're not nearly as visible as they would be if you had a big old spoon or something like that on. You only have one little ball head that's going to be attracting attention. Got it? You missed him? It's all right. Hold on. He'll he'll come back. That's a light bite. Yep, it is. Just a real light bite. You got one. Great. Bring her on up. Good job. Good job. Oh, that's a little small one. That's okay. That's okay. Bring it on in. We'll get it unhooked and get it back in. Good job. And all I need to do is look on the finder. That's all I did. I just needed to, I was just trying to keep a good man down by not teaching you how to, how to, to view the finder. That's the way I get the advantage. That's the way uh, professional anglers get the advantage. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. That's a good one. Right, okay, good. Bite. Good bite. At least got a bite there. Yep. Here, you'll need to get that put back on. All right. Life's good when you're catching fish. Okay, so we're sitting in, in uh, 40 feet of water. So you caught that fish in about 36 feet of water. Straight down under the boat. Now I'm looking right here. See, these fish have gotten active right here. Probably can't see that. Those fish have gotten active right there. There's a fish right there at 20. But... Uh, and, that, and, and usually, if you catch a fish out of a school down there close to the bottom, they're going to, they're going to get active. So we should see the chance of catching several more fish fairly quickly. One of us should get a bite right here. We've got fish looking at our stuff, several of them. Forty-seven feet. Now that screen's jumping around because I've zoomed it in. If I back it back off, it won't jump around quite as much. But when you zoom in, that transducer wants to see that, you know, it puts that, puts that image on the screen a lot tighter than it, than it actually is. You got him? 40 foot. 40 feet. Now that looks like another small one the way it's, the way it's handling, but you never know. You never know till you get it up. Yeah, he's just another good. Ah, that's nice. It's fish. just a real good. Yeah, just a real good. Uh, problem is, you don't have a good netter. <laughs> well, I got a netter. That's pretty good. <laughs> well, 
What did you do there? Man, he's you got to you got to learn to set the hook. <laughs> That's a that's a great fish. That's a real fine fish. A very good fish. There we go. There's a fish, and that just really came and just took it. Yeah, that you can see it on the finder. That was the fish right there. I don't know if I can keep it hooked. It looks like it feels like another smaller one. No, it's a not a, not a bad fish. I think I can I think I can just get him up and taken care of without much much ado there we go back in the water everything great I think I can still use that little piece of night crawler as my as my bait so I'm just gonna drop it right back down and see if we can't catch another one okay so we're now 45 46 see all that activity down on the bottom that's some some smaller fish that are feeding and some minnows down there I would imagine there are a few kokanee down there just because of where we are. Sometimes you'll get these, those fish, like that, like that one, that just came and hit just again, just exactly like we we're talking about. But look at, those, look at those fish on the finder. How could they miss my bait? How could they miss my bait? Because there were so many of them. And all, all I did is just picked one of them off. And that's, these are small fish right here. Not necessarily the big ones that we've been catching, but that's okay. The big ones run with the small ones at times. So we'll just go ahead and get that put away, and I think I can still use that same night crawler and get right down and see if we can't catch another one. You got another one there. Hey, good job. Just bring that on in, do the same thing. Nice job. I had, yeah, that's a rainbow. Do you, would you want to take one home? It is a rainbow. If you'd like to take a rainbow home, you sure can. You just put it in that live well right underneath your right foot. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so now we've moved up to 37 feet out of that little pocket that we were in back there. And, and, um, and I've only moved 25 yards tops. But now I've, I'm going to drop down on, on the top of this little edge. And if you'll see, there's a, there's a nice trout right there sitting right on top of that not quite on the bottom but not but not up so far you got him you got another one good job good job I'll drop my rod and come back and help you that was right on that tip was it that's probably the one that, that, that we were both seeing that's a nice fish Good job. Great job, Kent. See if I can't that's get that. Beauty. That's a beautiful fish. Let's go ahead and took it right in the top of the mouth. That's yeah, well. the that we know they're feeding when they do that. We didn't let him swallow that one. Didn't really. no, you're good. You can see my, if you're looking down at the finder, you can see my bait is a kind of a blackish line. That's where I'm holding mine, right there at about 43, 44 feet. And the fish didn't follow. They just stayed doing what they're doing. Now it's getting just a little tiny bit shallower. So without me moving my, my bait, it's getting closer and closer to the bottom. But now we've got some fish coming in above it so I'm going to continue to reel up see if I can't see some of these suspended fish and now I should be right in the middle of them but I've got one on the bottom that looks pretty big that mark right there right there on the bottom I don't know if I can get you to see that but anyway there's a mark right above the bottom that's a that's a pretty big fish and it's just sitting there kind of waiting for my lure as long as it's ready as long as it's eager to eat
She doesn't look like it wants to eat. There we go. He did want to eat after all. So that one was at 47 feet. Doesn't seem like too big a fish. Nope, just one of the smaller variety. One of those cookie cutter cuts, but they're sure fun to catch. There we go. Very nice. I think I still have enough worm to go down and catch another one. Come on, take it. Now we've got two or three fish looking at the bait. That's always a, a good thing. There it goes, and he took it right there. You see the, see the fish take. Another small one, I'm sure, but... Oh, that's... You can, you can keep that one. Uh, that'd be a nice, nice eater to go with your rainbow. Just a little small cutthroat right there. Beautiful eating fish. It's your turn Kent my boy. Let's get a fish in here. There you go. That's just like uh, just like clockwork. So what happens when you? It's all right. No, oh, that's a no. Oh, that's a pretty good fish. I think you can lift it in though. Oh, I got him. I think you can do that. It don't matter if it gets off. Oh yeah. No, that's good. That's one of those little uh, uh, skinnier. Yeah. They, they have a, a fat variety and a skinnier variety, and that's one of the skinnier. It's a certainly a nice fish though. Get that. Tube out, fantastic. Show him up, uh, hold him up for a second. That's great, fantastic. Put him back. Let him go back to mama, right? Yeah, grow up, I come back. <laughs> Oop, missed him. That was a good little hit. Kind of see that there are a few fish down there just wandering around. There's some small stuff there too. There's some small bait fish. And what we've learned now is these little small fish that we're seeing down there are, are those eight to ten inch rainbow, sterile rainbows that they're planting. And uh, there we go. There we go. That might be one of those right there. Actually, it's feeling a little bit better than that, but. We knew we we had some fish going. Nope, just another one of those little cookie cutter, a little bit bigger than cookie cutter, but nice, nice, nice uh, cutthroat. Top of the mouth once again. They're feeding. Nice job.